What is going on guys? My name is Kenji and welcome to my channel. Um, if this is one of the first times you're watching my videos, uh, I'm a second year medical student studying in London, but I'm a graduate, so I did my last degree in biomedical science at the University of Birmingham. If you haven't subscribed yet, you'll be happy to know that it's free. And it'll take you two seconds to go down below and subscribe, so please consider doing so. I want to start the video off by wishing you all a massive um, Happy New Year's. I know I just posted a video, a video recently, um, but I recorded that video in 2018, so I didn't actually get a chance to wish you guys Happy New Year. So Happy New Year to you, and I hope you managed to accomplish all of the goals you set in 2018. If you've been following me on Instagram, you've seen that I actually managed to accomplish my last and final goal of 2018, uh, which I was so happy about. Uh, on Boxing Day, I got an email saying that my research that I was doing throughout the, the whole of first year has finally been published um, and it's now been added to my wall um, of achievements, which you can see right there. So I was so happy about that. My final, my final goal of 2018 was finally ticked off the list. In this video, I want to speak to you guys about how to do research. So I want to be talking to you guys about uh, why you should do research, you know, why it matters, um, how to get research placement, and finally, a little bit about um, how you can get funding for your research as well. But before I go into that, I wanted to let you guys know that I've actually started an email newsletter. Um, I really want to provide some more value to you guys. Um, so every Monday morning at 7.30 a.m. I'll be re releasing a newsletter every single week. Um, I've wanted to do it for such a long time now um, and I put it on my goals of 2019. Um, so I thought I'd just take it off the list and just start a newsletter straight away. Um, so in the newsletter, I want to be talking about um, just kind of things I've learned during the week, um, some life advice, um, some tips, and just kind of things that I found really interesting throughout the week. Um, so I'll put the link in the description. I'll also put it on the screen somewhere here. Um, so please feel free to subscribe to that. Um, as I said, every Monday, I committed to it. I set myself a goal to get it done uh, for at least one year. So please feel free to subscribe to that and hopefully you guys will enjoy it. So the first question I want to answer is why you should do research at all. Um, obviously, it's a lot of your time. I don't want you guys to waste your time. So I thought I'd just start off by telling you guys um, why doing research is beneficial. Uh, so the first reason is that it's great for your CV. Um, having a CV saying you've done research um, is amazing for whatever you do, whether you're a biomedical science student or whether you're a medic, um, it really, really is important to have this on your CV. Um, if you're a biomedical science student, when you're applying to your PhDs or for your masters or for a job, it really looks great on a CV. Um, if you're a medical student, just having that on your CV is really important because when you apply for your F1 jobs and um, your FY1 jobs um, as a foundation doctor, you get extra points. So I might make another video to tell you guys all about how um, the point system works when you're applying for your foundation year jobs. But basically at the end of medical school, um, all the medical students are ranked and you get extra points in your ranking if you do manage to get a publication from your research. Um, so try and get a publication if you can, because it really, really will help you when applying for your foundation year jobs. So the second reason why um, having research is really, really good, it's actually really, really fun. And it also helps you uh, develop all of your analytical skills. Uh, working in a lab can be quite challenging. Um, and working in a lab, doing research, really teaches you loads of different skills, loads of different practical skills. Um, so I definitely recommend it just for your own personal development. If you're a biomedical science student as well, and in your final year, you might have a research placement. Doing a research placement in your second year or in your first year will really, really prepare you for that final dissertation, for that final research project that you might have. Um, whether you're a biomedical science student going into your final year or whether you're a medical student going into your insulating year. Um, so I definitely recommend it just to have that experience working in a lab. Um, it really, really will set you up uh, for your future. Another reason, apart from your CV, is that it's just a great way to spend your time. Um, so I try to spend a lot of my time in the labs, uh, during summers especially, because if it wasn't for that, I'll be on holiday somewhere, chilling by a beach and doing absolutely nothing with my time. So I always try and do at least one research project a year, just to make sure that I'm pushing myself, that I'm making myself um, go out of my comfort zone and uh, just get more experience and just not waste my time and do something productive with my time. So moving on to when you should do it, um, it really does depend on you know, what type of student you are, uh, what type of degree you're doing. If you're a biomedical science student or a medical student, um, I definitely recommend doing it uh, in the summers. So you can do it after your first year, um, during the summer, after your second year as well. Um, I personally did it in my biomedical science degree um, in the summer after my second year. So I spent eight weeks in the labs um, doing a research project. And that is a really good time to do it because you have nothing else, you have no other work to do, and you could focus on just the project itself. But as a medical student, after my biomedical science degree, I actually did it throughout the whole of first year. Um, I don't really recommend this. I'm a graduate on an undergraduate course, um, so I have a bit more time. Um, so I spent around 20 to 30 hours a week working in a lab, which is hella time. Uh, I spent so much time in the labs. I don't really recommend that. But if you feel like you do have the time, you feel like you are managing your time well, then you can do it throughout the whole year as well. Um, so as I said, I spent a few hours every single week in the labs uh, and I'm actually doing it now as well. Uh, I'm doing it in my second year. So I just want to get as much research done as possible, as many publications as possible, and just learn even more in the labs. But yeah, as I said, I don't recommend doing it throughout the year. Um, last year, I was really lucky. Um, I had a research placement. Um, I was alongside my medical degree. 
Um, I still went out with my friends a lot. I still managed to run a YouTube channel. Um, it was hella busy for me and I really didn't have that much time. I was really busy throughout the whole year. So I definitely would recommend doing it in your summers if possible. If you're a medical student, you can also do research. If you decide to intercalate, uh, which is basically doing uh, one year um, out of medicine. So take a year out of medicine after I think your third, your third year. Um, if you decide to take a year out um, and do research, you can definitely spend some time doing research during that year. Um, and possibly get a publication as well. Um, so that's another time that you can do it as well. Okay, so now onto the topic of the video, how the hell do you get research placement? There's a number of ways of doing this. The first and probably the easiest way of doing this is to ask your personal tutor. So when you go to university, you usually assign to a personal tutor who looks after you. Um, so if you're doing biomedical science or doing medicine, the chances are that your personal tutor will be um, a scientist um, or a doctor, a clinician. Um, so use that to your advantage. Um, if you do have a personal tutor who's in research, who's in science, um, first of all, ask them if they have a position in their lab that you can possibly fill. Ask if there's a project that you could possibly do, and hopefully that will work. Um, that's what I did in my biomedical science degree. Um, unfortunately, my personal tutor didn't have enough space in his lab to take me on, but he recommended me to a number of to a number of different scientists who could take me on. And the person that he actually recommended me to agreed to take me on for a summer research project. So that's the first and probably the easiest way of doing it. The second way of doing it is to approach a scientist uh, yourself. So after your lecture, if there's a particular lecturer who you like, um, whose research you like, approach them and just you know walk up to them after the lecture and say, hi, my name is uh, Kenji. Um, I'm a biomedical science student or I'm a medical student and I really love your research. I was wondering if there's any way that you could possibly have me uh, for a research project in your lab over summer um, and just try and express your enthusiasm um, read a few of their research papers and show them that you actually know uh, what research they actually do um, and hopefully that will work. I know that's definitely happened and worked for a number of my friends uh, so try and do that as well and the majority of the time they will be very happy to have a student on board. Uh, so that's the second way of doing it. The third way of doing it uh, which is how I did it in my undergraduate degree in biomedical science is uh, sending out an email. So this is the same way I got my medical work experience as well. Essentially what I did is I sat down on a laptop and I drafted out an email basically saying that I'm a, I'm a second gen biomedical science student. Um, I really have a passion for your research. Um, I love immunology. Um, I re I've read a number of your papers and they really, really fascinate me. I've done really well in my degree so far. I've achieved uh, a first class or an upper two one in my first and second year. And I really just want to get some uh, work experience in a research lab. Is there any way that you could possibly have me? Um, and yeah, so just compose an email like that, um, send it off to a number of researchers. Usually if you're in university, you can go online to your university website and we'll have a massive list of all the different researchers and, um, and all of the email addresses as well. So make use of that. I, I know it's a bit stalkery, but you need to literally just find these email addresses, find people whose lab you wanna join um, and just send them out this email. I think I sent an email to about 20 researchers uh, and two of them got back to me saying that they're happy to have me. Um, so a number of them obviously will reject you and say, sorry, we have no space. But there is a very strong possibility that one of them will be happy to have you. Uh, so that is the next way that you can get research placement. Okay, so the final way that you can get research placement is by applying for any advertised op opportunities. So in some universities, they publicly advertise research opportunities. Um, I don't think they do this at King's. But I know that in other universities, they definitely do this. So go on your university website and have a look to see if any labs are actually publicizing these opportunities for undergraduate students. An alternative to this is you can email your head of year. And you can ask them if there's any research opportunities available that they might know of. Uh, you never know. And see if that works out as well. So once you do manage to secure a research placement, the next thing you kind of need to think about is uh, to get funding. You don't necessarily need funding to do research, um, but it really helps to get money in your bank account so that you're not broke uh, throughout the summer. I managed to get a research grant in my second year of biomedical science and also in the summer of my first year um, as a medical student. In my biomedical science degree, I got funding from the Wellcome Trust, which is an amazing company that funds uh, biomedical science students. So I'll put a link to that in, in the description below. Aside from the Wellcome Trust, universities also usually uh, give out money to their students. Um, so as well as the Wellcome Trust, I also applied for a biomedical science scholarship, which was given by my course. So I applied for that, I had, I had an interview for that and I was also successful in getting that as well. Um, but obviously they didn't let me have uh, both fundings. So I ended up choosing the Wellcome Trust. In the first year of my medical degree, I managed to get funding from the university. Um, so the university gave me a couple of hundred pound a week uh, just to do research. Um, and a lot of the times they also give money to your research lab as well, just to cover the cost of having you there. So biomedical science, I got around 250 pound a week, which is actually quite a lot. I also use the money uh, to live off and I also went on a massive shopping spree. Um, so that is quite a lot of money. In King's, my medical degree, I think I got half of that. I think I got around 125 pounds per week, uh, which wasn't that much, but I managed to pay for my food and for my transport and things like that as well. 
Um, so make sure you try and get funding. There's loads of different companies out there who are willing to give you free money to fund your research. Um, so do your research into that as well. And hopefully you get some money and hopefully you won't spend it on a shopping spree like I did and you'll actually use it for something um, more appropriate. That is pretty much it guys. That is how you get a research placement. Um, as a quick update, it's now January. I spent my Christmas in Kenya, uh, visiting my family and spending some time with my friends as well. Uh, but I'm finally back in England. And this year, I made a huge list of all the goals I want to accomplish. Um, so I really hope this is a really successful year for me. 2018 was really successful as well. I managed to get all my goals done. And most importantly, I hope this year is a year for you as well. I hope you managed to achieve all of the goals you set out to achieve. And hopefully at the end of 2019, you can look back and be very proud of yourself. Um, so thank you so much for watching, guys. As I said, I have an email newsletter which I want to be doing every single week. So please subscribe to that. Please feel free to follow me on Instagram. I've actually just made um, a new Instagram which is specific for my YouTube channel. So have a look at that. Um, feel free to subscribe to that. Also feel free to subscribe to my personal Instagram. So I'll put that on the screen as well. My Snapchat as well. And also feel free to send me any questions that you might have to my email address. Um, so yeah, if you have any more suggestions about what you'd like to see, any specific videos, as always, let me know with a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.